الحمد للہ رب العالمین السلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول الکریم السلام علیکم ایوری ون آئی ہوپ یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ سورا ان نصر اینڈ ان نصر ایز آئی ہوپ یو نو مینس ہیلپ سو ان نصر مینس دا ہیلپ ایز یوژول ویل اسٹارٹ بائی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا لرننگ آبجیکٹوس سو وٹ ڈو وی وانٹ ٹو لرن ان ٹو ڈیز لیسن وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ وٹ از مینٹ بائی وکٹری سو دیٹس دا فرسٹ تھنگ we'll talk about how this victory impacted or affected the people of arabia and third point is what is meant by glorifying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking his forgiveness and why are these things important why is it important to glorify allah why is it important to seek forgiveness so these are the major learning objectives now as we've done before we'll also talk about the connection with the previous surah Do you remember the previous surah? I hope you do. The previous surah was Surah Al-Kafirun. Okay, and do you remember what happened in that surah? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was commanded in Surah Al-Kafirun to announce to the disbelievers in clear words, "For you is your deen and for me is my deen. You can do whatever you want. I will never worship your gods." So basically the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave a message that there is no compromise in this religion. So in a sense the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam announced a conflict with the kuffar. So there was a conflict between the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his enemies the kuffar. In this surah surah an-nasr the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been given the glad tidings that this deen the deen of islam will surely prevail and be victorious it should be noted that in this surah the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been given the good news of victory and this was revealed 3 months prior to his demise so in other words this was revealed 3 months prior to the death of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Now let's talk a little bit about the introduction and historical background. This surah was revealed in the last period of the Holy Prophet's life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It states that along with the conquest of Makkah, the Muslims will gain many more achievements. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be victorious. Now I hope you recognize that this surah was revealed after the conquest of makkah i've already talked about when it was revealed the conquest of makkah happened in 8 hijri which means 8 years after the migration from makkah to madina and what is happening here is basically the prophet has won so in the fata in the conquest of makkah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the muslims took over makkah so the struggle with the kuffar of makkah ended and the muslims were victorious so After this a great number of people will enter into the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the great mission of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will reach its completion and what is that mission the great mission of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the dominance of the deen the deen of islam in this surah the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also instructed to glorify allah and to seek his forgiveness and when we talk about the surah in more detail we'll also understand the meanings of these terms so what does it mean to glorify allah what does it mean to seek his forgiveness ummul mu'minin hazrat aisha razi allah anha said and by the way do you know what ummul mu'minin means ummul mu'minin means the mother of the believers and all the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were the mothers of the believers so when we refer to them we say mothers of the believers or we also say ummul mu'minin and one of them was hazrat aisha radhi allah anha and she said the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam often said while doing ruku and sujood so he said the following subhanakallahumma rabbana wa bihamdika allahumma ighfir li so normally when we do ruku what do we say subhana rabbi al azim but over here 
the Prophet would say more. He would say, Glory be to you, O Allah. So that's Subhanakallah Huma. And then Rabbana wa bihamdika. Our Lord and praise be to you. And then Allahumma khfirli. O Allah, forgive me. So what the Prophet is doing here is following the instructions that are given to him in Surah An Nasr. Okay, so this is something for us to also learn from. Now, let's go over the surah and I want you to repeat after me. So, I will recite slowly and then I want you to repeat. A'uzu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Idha jaa nasrullahi wal fath. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا So I hope you repeated after me. Now I will go over the meaning. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ when comes the help of Allah and victory, so Nasr as we said means help and Fatah means victory. So when comes the help of Allah or we can also say when the help of Allah comes and victory. In other words, when Allah's help comes and there is victory. And O Prophet وسلم, you see people entering the deen of Allah in multitudes. In multitudes means lots and lots of people are entering the deen. And in this surah as in earlier surahs, Allah is talking to the Prophet وسلم, and Allah is saying that you see many many people entering the deen of Allah. فَسَبِّهْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Then pronounce the purity and praise of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Indeed, he is ever acceptor of repentance. So Allah loves to accept our repentance. That was a quick meaning of the surah. Now let's talk about each ayat in a little more detail. So the first ayat. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ When comes the help of Allah and victory. And again, I want you to remember the key words. Ja'a means comes. Nasrullahi is the help of Allah. And Fat is victory. So when comes the help of Allah and victory. So let's talk about what Allah's help means. It means Allah's support and approval for the struggle of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers. As you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers were struggling. So they were working for Islam. They wanted to convey Islam to everybody. They wanted the religion of Islam to become the dominant way of life. And Allah's help means Allah's support and approval for this struggle. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions Razi Allahu Anhum were striving to propagate Islam with sincerity and were facing hardship for its sake. Eventually, Allah's help arrived and Islam prevailed. So I hope you know here that in the first few years of the struggle for Islam, so when the Prophet ﷺ got the first revelation and then he started preaching, in Mecca there was a lot of oppression and we've talked about that in earlier surahs. I hope you remember that. And now Allah is talking about the victory. So there is an important aspect over here. There's a practical aspect. Allah's help is most important to us. It comes to those who obey Allah with sincerity. So the Prophet ﷺ and the believers worked in Allah's cause with full sincerity. They worked hard. They had sincerity in their hearts. And when this happens, then Allah helps. So Allah removes all difficulties. He is the real remover of difficulties and he is the true helper. As long as people believe with strong conviction in Allah and that Allah's help will come and then they work very hard, then Allah's help does indeed come. Let's talk a little bit more about the conquest of Makkah. 
The conquest of Makkah took place in Ramadan in the 8th year of Hijrah and this was January 630 AD. So the calendar that we are used to, we say it's 2021 now. So according to that calendar, the conquest of Makkah happened in January 630. The conquest of Makkah was a decisive victory. The pagans lost their strength after this conquest and Islam gained complete domination in Arabia. So do you know what we mean by pagans? So pagans are the people who would worship idols. So the idol worshippers or the kuffar, sometimes we call them pagans. So the people in Makkah who are fighting against the Prophet wasallam, they were the pagans or the, they were the idol worshippers. Sometimes we call them the kuffar because they rejected the message of the Prophet wasallam after this victory in Makkah. So Fatah in Makkah or the conquest of Makkah, the pagans lost their strength and then Islam gained dominance in Arabia. Do you know what domination or dominance means? So Islam became the most powerful religion in Arabia. So after that, everybody wanted to try and become Muslim. Okay, the Prophet wasallam left Medina with 10,000 courageous companions. So what we are talking about here is what? We are talking about the Fateh Makkah. So at this point, the Prophet ﷺ had been in Medina for eight years. And during this time, there were several battles. For example, there was the Battle of Badr, there was the Battle of Uhud, there was the Battle of the Trench. And now, eight years later, with 10,000 companions, the Prophet ﷺ is marching to Makkah to take over Makkah. He entered Makkah without any notable resistance. So when he came back to Makkah, the people of Makkah did not fight. So there was practically no resistance. Do you know what resistance means? So resistance basically means when people fight back. So the people of Makkah did not fight. The Holy Prophet ﷺ announced protection and peace for everyone who surrendered. So the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever surrenders, there will be total peace. The Holy Prophet ﷺ announced pardon for the staunch enemies of Islam as well. So the Prophet ﷺ said that even those who were enemies of Islam, they are also forgiven. So there was general forgiveness for everybody. Numerous people came to the Holy Prophet ﷺ on this occasion and accepted Islam. So many people came and they became Muslim. The tribe of Quraysh had 360 idols in the Holy Kaaba. Because up till that time, the idol worshippers controlled the Kaaba. So what did they do? They had many idols in the Kaaba and then they would worship those idols. The Holy Prophet ﷺ purified the Holy Kaaba by removing these idols. He broke them down with a wooden stick and recited this ayat. So the ayat is Ja al Hakku Vazahakal Batilu in al Batila Kana Zahuka. Truth has come and falsehood has vanished. Falsehood is surely bound to vanish. So this is from Surah Bani Israel, which is Surah number 17, ayat number 81. After that, the Holy Prophet ﷺ offered prayers of gratitude at this conquest, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made the announcement. Allah other than whom there is no God has fulfilled his promise, helped his slave and defeated all the armies alone. So this is a hadith. It is from a book of hadith called Sunan Abi Dawud. Okay, so this is something the Prophet wasallam said. And again, by saying this, the Prophet wasallam is thanking Allah. Okay, then coming to ayat number two. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا And O Prophet wasallam, you see people entering the deen of Allah in multitudes. Again, this means that many, many people are now entering the deen of Allah. So here we are talking about the result of victory. The people began to enter into the deen of Allah in multitudes. The impact of this conquest was not limited to the Quraysh. So the Quraysh became Muslim, but the impact or the effect of this was not just on the Quraysh, it was on many others. 
the representatives of different tribes of Arabia started coming to Medina in the form of envoys. So the representatives from different tribes would come. They would speak to the Prophet wasallam. They would learn about Islam. Many of them would accept Islam. Then they would go back to their tribes and tell their tribes about Islam. And then they would also accept Islam. So that way, Islam started spreading very quickly across all of Medina. And here, I want you to think about a contrast. When the Prophet wasallam started out in Makkah, it used to be so difficult. He would preach and preach and preach, but very few people became Muslims. And not only that, the few who became Muslims were persecuted. The kuffar would treat them very badly. They would torture them. So that was when the Prophet ﷺ used to be in Makkah many years ago. Now what's happening? Now people want to enter Islam on their own. And they are entering Islam in the hundreds and thousands. So thousands and thousands of people are now becoming Muslim. And they are themselves coming to the Prophet ﷺ to become Muslim. Many envoys came to the Holy Prophet. So envoys basically means delegations or a group of people. So a representative, somebody who represents his tribe and a few people. So they would come. So this group of people is called an envoy. So many envoys came to the Holy Prophet in the ninth and 10th year of Hijrah and accepted Islam. So this is after the conquest of Makkah. When did the conquest of Makkah happen? So this happened in the eighth year of the Hijrah. And then after that, there are all these people who have now started entering Islam. And these were generally people who were in the Arabian Peninsula. Thus, Islam reached every corner of Arabia in a period of two years. So during this time, Islam spread very, very quickly. And where did it spread? It spread in all of Arabia. Okay, here let's also talk about the meaning of the deen of Allah. By deen of Allah, we mean the law and way of life given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we follow it, we will be rewarded in the hereafter. And if we do not follow it, we will be punished. Following a law or system other than Allah's law will not be acceptable in front of Allah. So what does Allah say? Which law and which system are we supposed to follow? We are supposed to follow his deen, which is the deen of Islam. Okay, then the third ayah. Then pronounce the purity with praise of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. Indeed, he is ever acceptor of repentance. So this is actually the third ayat. And this is one of three surahs in the Quran that just has three ayats. So do you know the other surahs? So we have Surah Asr. Wal Asri inna linsana la fi khusrin. So that has only three ayats. Then we have inna ataina kal kawthar. That has three ayats. And then this surah has three ayats. So it is one of the shortest surahs in the Quran. And this is the third and last ayat. So... Here Allah Ta'ala gives a command. So this is the commandment when Allah's help and victory arrives. So Allah is saying when help and victory arrives, then pronounce Allah's purity with his praise and ask Allah for his forgiveness. So what does this mean? Sabbi. So Sabbi means glorifying Allah, but let's talk about this in more detail. This means to pronounce Allah's purity. That means recognizing that Allah is free from all weakness, all flaws, all deficiencies. In other words, Allah is completely perfect. There are absolutely no flaws, deficiencies. So we need to recognize that we have flaws. So if you think about it, do we have weaknesses? Yes, we have flaws and weaknesses. But does Allah have any flaws? No, Allah is completely perfect. So that's what we mean when we say sabbi or glorify Allah. So the next word is hamd. And do you remember this word from before? This we saw when we did Surah Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So it has to do with praise and gratitude. So to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is declare that all virtues, goodness and superior qualities belong to Allah. And this also includes being thankful. So being thankful to Allah's bounties is also included in the meaning of hamd. So again, I hope you remember that hamd includes both 
being thankful as well as praising Allah. Okay, then we have istighfar or seeking forgiveness. And in this surah, we are, we are told that we should ask Allah for forgiveness for our faults and sins. Another important word is toba or repentance. And this means to turn. And what sort of a turn? Just to go straight and turn. Actually, this means to turn away from sin and towards good. So if you think about it, if you are going in a direction and you are going towards something bad, so you want to do something bad, but then you change your direction and go towards something good or you turn towards what Allah is asking you to do. That is called toba. So to turning, so to turn away from something bad and to turn to something good. In other words, try to turn to what Allah is saying. So that is toba. Okay, now let's talk about some practical lessons. Every Muslim has been instructed that when Allah makes them succeed in their goals, and blesses them with his mercy, they must ask Allah for forgiveness for their mistakes and thank him instead of being arrogant about their success. So this is very important. Normally, when people succeed, what do they do? They start celebrating, people start jumping up and down. When there is a big military victory, what happens? You see a big parade, you see the tanks and you see the people shouting and you see people jumping and giving high fives and all being happy. Why do they do that? They think because they do that because they think it's their greatness because of which they have won. So they feel very proud. They feel that inside them they have this thing that I am so good that's why I have won. But what is Allah teaching us? Why do we win? And who do we give credit to when we win? What Allah is teaching us is that we should give credit to Allah. So why do we win? We win because Allah, because of Allah's help. And therefore, when we win, what should we do? We should thank Allah. And we always make mistakes. We make some mistakes. So we ask Allah for forgiveness. Some points to remember. Allah will help those who believe in the Holy Prophet وسلم, as he helped his beloved Prophet. So the point here is that just like Allah helped the Prophet, Similarly, Allah will help those who believe in the Holy Prophet and then also struggle the way the Holy Prophet struggled. So those who work in Allah's cause, the way the Prophet worked and believe in the Prophet and believe in Allah, Allah will help them. Second point, Allah grants victory to those who work hard for the deen of Allah in this world too. So when people work hard, obviously they will get a reward in the hereafter. But Allah also gives a reward in this world. The Prophet and the Muslims struggled for so many years and then finally Allah gave them victory. Allah gave them victory in this world and obviously they will also be successful in the next world. Third point, the domination of the deen becomes a means of people's acceptance of it. So what does this mean? Once the deen became dominant and do you know what dominant means? So dominant means that now everybody in Arabia started accepting the deen. It became the most important or the biggest religion in Arabia. Once that happened, many more people wanted to enter Islam. In the beginning, when there were just a few Muslims, people did not want to enter Islam. But once Islam became powerful and the Muslims became powerful, then everybody also wanted to enter the deen. The next point. Allah is very compassionate to his servants and ever acceptor of their repentance. So ever acceptor of their repentance means that whenever we repent, whenever we say sorry to Allah, if we do something wrong and we do astaghfar, so we ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah forgives us. So that's what it means that Allah accepts our repentance. When we apologize, Allah accepts. It's like if you do something wrong and then you go say sorry to your mom or sorry to your dad, your parents are very happy to forgive you. Allah loves us much, much more than our parents love us. So when we say sorry to Allah, when we apologize, when we repent, then Allah very happily forgives us. The fifth point is that we should praise and glorify Allah and seek his forgiveness abundantly. So even when we achieve a big victory, we should think that this victory has come because of Allah, because it actually has come because of Allah. And therefore, we should praise Him, we should glorify Him, 
and we should constantly ask for forgiveness. So those were the major messages. I hope that we will also apply these messages to ourselves. So when we are successful, what should we do? Very good. When we are successful, we should thank Allah, we should glorify Him and we should also ask for repentance. This was a message in the Surah for the Prophet ﷺ, but through this message to the Prophet ﷺ, it is also a message for all of us because we are all followers of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So that is it for this lesson. I hope you learnt a lot and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.